segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. Ryan Williams and Mr. Leslie Davis, two uh, members of Street Works, uh, an organization that uh, does HIV and AID uh, outreach. And of course, Mr. Davis and uh, Mr. Williams, I think Mr. Uh, Davis, we promised you before we had our first commercial break mm -hmm. that we give you an opportunity to talk about uh, outreach and some of the activities that you're involved in at Street Work. Thank you, Dr. Heine. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the outreach team leader. What I do is coordinate outreach events. Um, a lot of times, um, the part of what I do leads into Mr. Williams um, because we do HIV testing on the street. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, at Streetworks, we try to serve the uh, hard to reach population, mm -hmm. the underserved population. We go into uh, drug use areas, mm -hmm. prostitution areas, and we try to mm -hmm. reach the people who are most at risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do that with, uh, we give away condoms and information about our programs, as well as we try to get people to do the HIV test. We have a big mobile unit that we go and, 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 and do those type of things. We also participate in health fairs. We coordinated ourselves, the whole agency, uh, a fall festival uh, in September where we invited different agencies from around town to come out and do several different types of screenings. We were diabetes, blood pressure, um, from different agencies mm -hmm. around the uh, city. And we brought them to the areas in which we serve the people uh, in the South Nashville area. So um, in, in doing that, we reach a wide population, a variety of people, you know. We try to, uh, we do a lot in the African American community. Mm -hmm. We have had some inroads with the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is in the African American community. Mm -hmm. And um, street works, basically, um, we are the best at that particular, mm -hmm. in that population and doing what we do as far as street outreach and now, outreach period. I understand and of course I think that uh, people often explain it that uh, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, this HIV AIDS is in, in under in terms of numbers among African Americans. Is that yeah. why, why don't you say something about that in terms of how critical it is in reference to this population? This exactly. Situation? Close to half, 45 to 50 percent of the persons who are infected with HIV are African American and the number of African-American women is much higher than anybody else in the nation at the moment. So that, that is a real problem. Um, I think that the lack of education, a lot of miseducation, a lot of myths are still floating around, even though um, I've been doing this work 10 years, and I know you've been mm -hmm. doing several shows over the years mm -hmm. uh, concerning this, Mr. Crowder. Everybody, the education is out there. Mm -hmm. I think that we still have a big, a real big stigma, um, I think especially in the South, mm -hmm. about HIV, AIDS, persons who are living with HIV and AIDS. I think that um, it's important for us to dispel the myth, myths mm -hmm. and dispense facts concerning HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. um, how you get it, how you don't get it. And at this point, uh, a lot of people still believe that it's a death sentence mm -hmm. if you do get it. They don't want to talk about it. Um, people who think they're not infected um, shun people who are infected. Mm -hmm. So people who are infected don't want to seek help, mm -hmm. uh, don't want to go to the doctor. Um, they, they don't want to socialize and they don't want to tell people who they may come in contact mm -hmm. and could possibly infect mm -hmm. that they are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that is a big problem as far as, uh, and especially in the African American mm -hmm. community, the stigma. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that we definitely have to get over that and embrace those of us whom uh, have the virus mm -hmm. in, in, in order to make them comfortable about yeah. talking about, about it, what they ed have. exactly mm -hmm. educating mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. so we can keep our whole community safe mm -hmm. you see and, and miss williams in, in in terms of uh, uh early intervention wh what are some of the things that you find to be uh, uh very very important in terms of dealing with this disease i'm gonna piggyback on mr davis and i'm gonna say the the stigma is one of the largest issues that we have mm -hmm. Me coming from a uh, college education background, we, we never even discussed this in, in any of my classes mm -hmm. that once that you have, once you have came in contact with this, people look at you like mm -hmm. you are nothing anymore. People, that's why people are, are so harsh and they don't want to disclose the fact that, yes, now that I have this disease, mm -hmm. I got to keep to myself, I got to go on the shell and now mm -hmm. that I, I can't be in, in society like I was or once was, they think life is over mm -hmm. as it as it may seem at that time it isn't. Mm -hmm. And so as my job, one of my jobs is to instill in them the hope that 
it's not life is not over. Mm -hmm. And then to also let them know that with the medical advances, the things that, that have came it's, it's came a long way from when mm -hmm. the 80s when HIV and AIDS were first mm -hmm. introduced until now, we have uh, over 20 something drugs that people can take. Mm -hmm. And the drugs are designed to make them live a, a substantially longer life. Mm -hmm. And so if they do the, do the right things, eat, eat properly, and take care of themselves as, as a normal person would, then they can live a productive mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and they can have productive relationships. Mm -hmm. But once they come in contact with HIV, they feel like I can never have an intimate relationship again mm -hmm. because I'm not going to tell somebody that I have HIV or AIDS because mm -hmm. they're not going to want to talk to me. And it's the ignorance. You know, one of the things that, that, that I'm curious about, uh, what about the spirituality of uh, some of these individuals? Does, does that ever come into a play, uh, the very, very fact of uh, the spirit, them being spiritual beings and et cetera? Is, is that simply absent in terms of any kind of discussions that you have with them or what? I, I kind of feel out the situation. Um, when I'm talking to a client, I can tell if they have any kind of spirituality as far as most of the clients, when they first get diagnosed, they're, they're like, I'm not going to believe it because I got my faith and my mm -hmm. faith is this and mm -hmm. this is it. And so I can, I can go on that and say, well, you know, you took, it, you took a chance. You got risky behavior. You mm -hmm. did this and now you have to take the responsibility for it. And so I can give them the, the information that I have and tell them that, of course, if you're spiritual and you believe in this God or that God, mm -hmm. your God will bring you out. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, don't lose your uh, don't lose your hope. Mm -hmm. Just don't lose your hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 as as you've worked in, and we've got about a minute, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Davis, and you've worked in in, in this area uh, for a number of years, and, and and so you think that the stigma is still as well as you, both of you think that this the whole stigma thing that keeps uh, us from being able to really deal with this as an issue. Yeah, I think stigma uh, definitely perpetuates the uh, disease. Mm -hmm. um, it keeps us um, uh, behind as far as in knowledge and even actions mm -hmm. because uh, people do not act um, as they probably should mm -hmm. or in a healthy manner mm -hmm. when uh, they are faced with the stigma mm -hmm. and faced with, um, you know, living life with this um, virus. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's stigma play, it's playing a big part. And, you know, miseducation, undereducation, mm -hmm. that type of thing has a lot to do with mm -hmm. it. But I think that if people were more open to talking mm -hmm. about it and mm -hmm. having these kind of discussions, we can very move good. forward. And, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be back with our audience following this very, very uh, short uh, commercial break.